Very glad to have our next guest back for another visit. He is known as Mr. Global on all the socials. Matt Randolph is here. He's an expert in the oil and gas industry and also appreciates a fine grilled cheese. Matt Randolph, thank you so much for coming back to Matt Nair on Air. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. I have learned so much in watching your videos. Uh, you're on all the socials, but I, I find you on, I stumbled over you on TikTok. And I highly encourage people who have questions about the gas and oil industry, if you want to hear from someone who actually does the job and is in the field and has the charts and has the graphs, this is the man that you want to follow. So Matt, we're going to start off by, and we talked about this last week. And if your ears were burning, that's because we used some of your clips from the last time that you were here. Uh, let's play that clip, Calvin, on uh, Mr. Global on seasonal gas prices. Let's start there. This was me five weeks ago. What's going to happen over the next three months? Here in about two or three weeks, gas prices are going to start falling due to seasonal demand. It's mighty funny how it comes election time, they can lower everything, right? Huh. And you will all claim that they're lowering prices for the election. Can someone say elections? I think you can see where this is going. Shall we continue? I don't believe it. But what I'm saying is true. Those claims are coming. It's totally happening. Even though nothing will change fundamentally, OPEC will not be increasing production. Nothing is going to change fundamentally. So you can go back to it here in a couple, here, here in, I don't know, a month maybe when all this starts happening. It's going to happen. It's, it's a thousand percent going to happen. I it's love seasonal demand. 25 of the last 30 years, gas prices have dropped between June and December. Happens almost every year. You just only notice it on election years. If I elections were held in May gas prices would increase almost every election. I love, man, how people just walk right into things for you. You know, <laughs> it's like, let me set this up for you, Mr. Global, so you can dispute what I just said because I'm not informed. It's it's a beautiful thing. It, it really is. And it makes my job so much easier. I'm, I'm <laughs> so thankful. I'm so thankful for those people because they literally set it all up for me. Like, I, I what can I say? <laughs> I honestly really like when I'm at the gas station, the last thing I want to do is fill myself doing anything. I want to fill up and leave. This is the fact that like, you know what I need to do right now while I'm filling my car, make a political statement. Well, and when we brought this up last week, because again, gas prices now are finally under th on average under three bucks a gallon in, uh, in most of Wisconsin. And the cl this has nothing to do with the election. Can you explain to people, first of all, Joe Biden is not sitting in the Oval Office calling OPEC and telling them to increase production so gas prices go down so Kamala Harris can get elected, or is he? So, you know, there's a joke running that I have a little knob on my bedside table, and whenever the president calls, I just turn it to the right a little bit. But, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, uh, I did look at uh, gas prices in your area this morning. Uh, it looked like 279 at the quick trips. So about 279 where you're at, 259 where I'm at. Uh, gas is under three dollars in 15 states this morning. It will probably be under three dollars in about 27 or eight states by the end of this week. Uh, so what has happened is what happens every single year. Uh, summertime is over. Kids have gone back to school. No more vacations, no more traveling. Um, and we have switched from summer to winter blend. By September the 15th, winter blend has to be in all tanks across the country, with the exception of California. Theirs is delayed by a few weeks, and that's why their prices didn't fall when everyone else's did. 25 of the last 30 years, this has caused gas prices to go down. The only time gas prices don't go down in the fall is if you see a huge spike in oil prices. And the five years it didn't fall, we had big jumps in oil prices due to conflict in the Middle East or something else going on. This happens every single year. And so I, I, I am baffled that, that people don't have the awareness to understand that this happens every year of their lives, especially people that buy gas. You would think they would know this. I just think, Matt, that people are looking for anything to glom onto that is going to support <laughs> their already existing bias, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, oh, here's the thing that proves the thing that I believe. So I, this is now my fact. Right. And, and so one of the new arguments people are making is that, well, yes, it does fall every year, but this year is cheaper than last year or the year before, which is true. That is because we started at a lower spot this year. You know, uh, gas prices this summer were cheaper than they were last summer. So we don't have to fall as far to be cheaper than last year. So gas is around 65 cents a gallon cheaper than it was a year ago at this time. Um, oil prices are are lower. They're, they're roughly $12 a barrel lower. Uh, demand is about the same. So everything is in place for gas prices to fall to probably the mid to nineties uh, by, you know, end of this month to mid October, somewhere in that range. So, uh, but yeah, the, the whole election thing, you know, we hear about it every year and it's, it's just, it's something we're going to have to deal with forever. So. <laughs> One of the things, Matt, I wanted to reiterate with our listeners, and we spoke about this last time you were here, and by the way, welcome back. We're excited to have you, is that we like to hook our wagons onto gas prices as far as election, as far as the economy more so. Like, you know, people like to look at the economy. Well, gas prices are through the roof. For the, As you pointed it out to us, it's not about who's sitting in the chair now. It's about who was sitting in the chair maybe a year, two, three, four years ago striking deals with the oil producing companies or countries and OPEC that come around over the course of time to rear either it's ugly head or, you know, sometimes it's good head for us, but still it's not about Joe Biden or Donald Trump. It's about who was making the deal in 2018 or 2016. Exactly. That, that's exactly right. It's um, if, if there's any presidential policy or, or view that, that would impact oil and gas prices, it lags by several years, uh, nothing takes hold immediately or has any Im immediate impact. Well, and as you pointed out last time too, one of the deals that Donald Trump did do af affected how much the OPEC countries were producing. And he, he did a deal that allowed them to cut their production so that when Joe Biden took office, essentially prices were higher because of the deal that had been brokered earlier. Yeah, the OPEC 2020 deal was uh, the largest driver of high oil and gas prices in the United States in the year uh, 2022. Uh, OPEC cut production initially by 9.7 million barrels a day. And the problem with the deal was that it lasted for two years. You know, typically what OPEC does is they'll do something for 90 days and they'll come back and reassess and and make changes every 90 days or keep it the same if it needs to stay that way. And, you know, a, a two year arbitrary deal, 10% production cut, which lasted, you know, 18 months into the Biden administration. Once that full demand returned after the vaccines rolled out and people became more comfortable going back to work and, you know, everything got rolling again, absolutely that's going to cause very high oil and gas prices. So we had, we had basically 2019 demand, with pandemic level production is what we had because OPEC had had cut production by 10%. And that is a recipe for disaster every time for the American consumer. American oil companies and, you know, uh, OPEC oil companies, they made a fortune. Uh, Saudi Aramco became the richest company to ever exist, uh, had over $3 trillion dollars and U.S. dollars for, for future, future capital expenditures. So um, OPEC made out like a bandit on that deal. U.S. oil producers made a lot of money on that deal, but it was very bad for the U.S. consumer. And it was also very bad for the reputation of, of U.S. oil producers because we took the blame for all that when um, we really had no control over presidential policy con concerning OPEC and their production. If you're just joining us, Mr. Global is our guest. You can find him on TikTok and all the social medias, Matt Randolph is his actual name, uh, talking about energy and oil production and all of those things. We have a question for you, Matt, from someone on our text line. I live in River Falls. Our gas has stayed above three bucks for quite some time. How come all the cities around us are below three dollars, but our city is still so high? Well, I'm not uh, familiar with River Falls and, and can, <laughs> I can't tell you why gas is high in, in one localized area, but it's typically due to, uh, comp so if you have 
Um, I would guess that in River Falls, you have a lot, a lot of uh, big brand gas stations. So if you have a lot of big brand gas stations like Shell, Chevron, uh, Exxon, Marathon, if you have those uh, tightly packed in a, in a small area, it will drive up your local gas prices because the big oil retailers, they actually dictate to their franchisees what they want them to, to charge for gasoline. And then you have places like Racetrack, Quick Trip, um, those 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 convenience stores and gas stations that are not affiliated with an oil company, they have a lot of, of leeway and, lever, you know, they can do a lot with their gas prices. So if you have a lot of big oil condensed in a small area, you're going to have higher gas prices because whatever anyone charges in an area, everyone else is automatically going to charge. So basically the highest price gas station in a square mile area is going to set the price for all the other gas stations because they're not going to charge less. If everyone right. will go pay more at the Shell station, then they're going to charge what the Shell station is charging. So um, my guess is that probably has something to do with it. I appreciate you uh, you taking that question, Matt. We are going to play another clip before we go to break. Uh, Calvin, Donald Trump, former president and current presidential candidate for the Republican Party, says that if he gets back in office, he is going to cut the cost of energy by 50 percent. Calvin, let's play that clip. Under my leadership, the United States will commit to the ambitious goal of slashing energy and electricity prices by half at least. <laughs> he is going to cut energy prices by at least half, at least half within 12 months. What would that look like? Matt, what would that look like? Well, keep in mind that during the worst part of COVID, gas prices weren't half of what they are now. And oil went negative. You know, oil was trading below zero. So just a back of the envelope calculation, you would need oil, you know, at or below $20 a barrel to achieve those gas prices. And at $20 a barrel, there's not a single U.S. producer in the United States that is not losing money. Um, so that's what that would look like. That would look like a massive decrease in oil production within the United States. That would look like us handing more control back to OPEC, uh, trading that control for lower gas prices. And as soon as OPEC regained that control, they would cut production, raise prices and raise our gas prices. And we would be stuck again just like we were in 2022. So if he was able to achieve that, which I don't think he possibly can, it would be devastating for the U.S. industry. We have millions of workers that work in this industry. Uh, a lot of people would lose jobs, and it would be short-lived. Matt, Mr. Global is here. Matt Randolph, we are going to continue our conversation after a very short break. Stay close. You're listening to Matt Nair on air, coming to you across the vast global Civic Media Radio Network. <laughs> Good, good morning and welcome back to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Del Viente on the board coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha, Wisconsin. You can always join us. Call, text. It is the same number, 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter. Very happy to have him back. You know him as Mr. Global on TikTok and all the social medias. Matt Randolph is here with more than 30 years experience in the oil and gas industry, started working on an oil rig right out of high school, started his own oil company. I highly encourage you follow him on TikTok and watch his videos. It's very, very educational. I've learned so much because he's got the charts and the graphs and the facts and everything to back up the things he says, which is nice. He has all the best words. He does have, he has many, many good words. Uh, <laughs> Matt, I want to play another clip from, J.D. Vance and his plans should he and Donald Trump be elected. Calvin, let's play that clip from Mr. Vance, please. I mean, look, we're way below baselines in oil production per day. You talk to folks who work in natural gas, they'll tell you we could be producing two, three times as much natural gas in this country. It's been a total disaster under the. Well, what we've learned today is J.D. Vance knows about as much about oil and gas as Donald Trump does. <laughs> so is. Is that not accurate, Matt? I, I feel somehow that that is not accurate. 
Yeah, it is it is a complete detachment from reality because the fact of the matter is currently the last couple of days they've come up a little bit, but natural gas prices are at historic lows and they have been for a year and a half. And it's because we're producing so much natural gas. We're way oversupplied. Natural gas producers are struggling um, to pay their bills and meet their budgets. Uh, they're slashing drilling, they're shutting in wells, and it's because we're just swimming in it. We're literally swimming in natural gas. Um, I looked this morning, it's like 250 in MCF. Uh, in 2022, um, or yeah, in 2022, it was $10, and now it's 250. But for wow. most of most of the last year to 18 months, it's been in the dollar fifty to dollar seventy five range, down from ten dollars. So that tells you how much it's dropped by, like what seventy to eighty percent is how much it's fallen, and that's because we produce so much of it. And this idea that we can just double the production of something that everyone is currently losing money on just blows my mind. And and I don't know if he actually believes this or if he just thinks. His supporters will believe it. It's probably both. Um, but it's insane to think. And that doesn't include, later in that video, I, I laid out the cost um, for oil, oil and gas producers to double production in the United States. And it was somewhere around $600 billion is what they would have to spend to do that. Because we simply don't have the infrastructure in place to carry it anywhere. We don't have the pipelines. Uh, we don't even have the drilling rigs to do it. They, we would have to build new drilling rigs. Um, so all of those things added up. It would cost about $600 billion to double production in the United States. Double production of a product that they're already losing money on. So, um, you know, there's a reason when I say that's not a thing. People love it so much. And it's because it's literally not a thing. Like it's not even in the universe or reality we live in. It's not even a possibility. It must make other others like you who work in the industry when you hear this stuff, your heads just must be exploding all over the place because they say this with such confidence. And I don't know if there aren't enough people who are knowledgeable enough to push back on it like you are. Because I don't see J.D. Vance sitting down with you anytime soon uh, answering answering uh, questions or if you questioned him on something. So it, it's it's the confidence with which they deliver this informa mm -hmm. disinformation that I think is so troubling. Oh, yeah, I mean, so one of, go on, Matt. I was going to say one of the one of the things I have seen, you know, when you look at higher levels of, of the industry and, and this is probably the case in any industry in corporate America. The people that work, you know, in executive levels, they're kind of detached from reality, too. They believe, well, this is just political speak. You know, politicians say things. They really don't mean anything. From my point of view, if 100 million Americans believe this, then it absolutely matters whether it's just political speak or not. Like this sways elections. This, this, the, and, and it's why it's so important for people like me to be out here trying to educate the public and a lot of companies have followed my lead. Um, com oil companies are starting podcasts. They're, they're, they're finding people to put out into social media uh, to try to do what I'm doing because they now see the value in it. Whoa. They're, they're, they're listening to the I, – yeah, I – I think that's great. I think they should be having you on as a guest every week, but that's for another, that's, that's for different <laughs> considerations. Uh, you know, I mean, I've got a ton of other questions I could ask you, but unfortunately we are running out of time. We are, is, yeah, we yeah. are running out of time. Uh, and we did get a bunch of uh, questions on the text line, which I'm going to email to you, Matt. And then hopefully the next time we have you back on, you can, uh, you can respond to some of these questions. I don't want to put you on the spot. Some things are Wisconsin specific that you may not be particularly familiar with. So we'll, We'll email uh, those questions after the show and then get you back on sooner rather than later. Follow him on TikTok and on all the socials. Matt Randolph is Mr. Global. Thank you so very much for your time, and we'll talk again soon. See you soon, guys.